Hey everyone, welcome to Fancy Schmancy Wino. I'm James, not Jimmy, that's my brother. You'll meet him in the next video. We're two guys with the same name, drinking the same wines, and sharing our thoughts with folks like you. As uh, we talked about launching this, uh, this blog, the desire was to kind of share our, our love and our pleasure and our enjoyment in wine. And we thought, uh, how cool would it be to start with uh, two wines, uh, a red this week and a white next week, that really kind of change our perceptions or our perspectives on uh, those wines. Uh, for me, uh, like many of you, I started with whites, uh, in particular uh, Moscatos, Rieslings, those, uh, those sweeter wines. And uh, as I tried to get into more reds, I, I just didn't necessarily understand them. They weren't necessarily pleasurable at first. And you know, as you drink them, you start to develop uh, more of an understanding, more of an appreciation. Uh, but I'm going to share with you a wine this week that was really the first where I really picked up those uh, scents that other people mentioned, those descriptors, those flavors that you heard about that were you know, non-fruit flavors. And so uh, we're looking this week at the Gnarly Head Authentic Black uh, 2013. It's a, a Petite Syrah. Now, Gnarly Head is, is known really for their Zins, uh, some great wines. And, and this is a highly rated one as well. Um, you know, the, the term Gnarly Head itself comes from the Zinfandel uh, vineyards of California. That while most uh, vineyards are, are very uniform, they're on trellises, uh, the Zinfandel uh, vines or bushes, as you, you might call them, uh, were kind of unruly. And they, at, at their points, would have these uh, gnarly heads coming out of it, and, and thus the name. And so um, I think when I first you know, picked the wine, I was looking for something to go with dinner. I was supposed to find a red. And, uh, and for the, maybe the wrong reasons, I thought, well, it's a great-looking bottle. It's a, it's a great-looking label. Um, gnarly heads, cool sounding. Who, who doesn't like that? And, you know, it even comes with a, a black cork or a uh, simulated cork. And so uh, right or wrong, I, I picked the wine. And... Uh, and right away, as I opened it, started getting some of those things, and, and it was really intriguing to me. So I'm excited to share it with you, and, uh, and maybe for the first time, uh, introduce you to their products. And so let's jump right in. Um, as a Petite Syrah, there's certain things you might expect out of it. We'll go ahead and see how it looks on the pour. Oh, yeah. Um, if you know Petite Syrahs, or even Syrahs, you know that they're dark. This is a, a rich uh, burgundy, uh, ruby-colored, um, some have described it as inky, uh, maybe not black, but certainly as, as close as, as I've seen in a, a red wine. Uh, looks gorgeous. Uh, some older wines, you might see some uh, coloration at the edges or uh, some you know, Pinot Noirs, others where they're clear or almost can be seen through at points. Uh, none of that going on here. It's a consistent burgundy throughout, um, dark, rich. You know, even as I'm, as I'm swirling, as I'm looking at it, I'm already picking up that nose on there. And uh, so let's just jump right in. If, if you're drinking with me tonight, uh, let's go ahead and smell it. Get your nose right on in there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what uh, I was talking about earlier, about things that jumped out at me initially. Uh, you'd expect the black fruit, you know, blackberry, black cherry, maybe. Um, I think maybe some boysenberry. And, and you expect those. Yeah, I think, I think you, might, you might get some plum on there. Uh, but what gets exciting are those non-fruit uh, descriptors, the uh, chocolate maybe, uh, mocha. I've read some other people saying uh, maybe some vanilla. I, I, I guess I think of creaminess. I think of this, that's the kind of chocolate I'm getting out of there, a, uh, a creamy chocolate mixed with that berry smell. Mmm. Now, uh, being an American uh, red wine, it, it is a 14, 14 percent alcohol, I believe. So it's it's kind of got that heat on there. You can, you can smell the alcohol coming off of it, but it, it's not overwhelming. It's not overpowering. It's really that berry and chocolate and just kind of exciting. And so uh, again, if you're tasting with me tonight, cheers. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. Um, maybe you've heard fruit forward. Certainly, I mean, the berries come right out at you, that black fruit, um, that boysenberry. But uh, the chocolate's right there with it, so it kind of gets that creamy, uh, velvety, some might say. Um, you know, I also get just a little bit of spice on the, on the backside of that. Uh, 
I know the good Zinfandel, uh, Shiraz, you, you expect that spiciness, um, but I certainly get some of it here. Uh, not as much, but it's definitely there. It's got a long finish. It's, it's not overly tannic like some of the cabs, you know, that suck your face off kind of a, in some wines, bitter. It's certainly not that. But it's got a nice long finish. I mean, it's there, you're tasting it, it's big. As I think about eating, certainly uh, it's barbecue season, so maybe a steak, a hamburger. Uh, but we're also, at least here, starting to move towards fall. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking uh, chili, uh, you know, maybe pizza, something, you know, again, a little spicy, kind of big, go with a big wine. It's just very, very drinkable. Um, if you don't like reds, I wouldn't start here. But if you're starting to get into it, it's very drinkable. You're going to get uh, those descriptors that go beyond just fruit. And I think even a, a novice would, would pick up some of those. It's a great value. I mean, you can find this at any store. Um, Myers, Walmart here in the Midwest. Um, Binnie's in Chicago, where my brother is out in Seattle area. Total Wine, BevMo. So really easy to find. And it's a sub-$10 wine. I mean, it's a great rated wine. And you know, on that, my brother and I thought, you know, how are we going to rate these things? Uh, Vivino and other apps and services maybe go with stars, five stars, three stars. And uh, many of the magazines and other raters have gone with a number system, you know, something, you know, 100 point scale, um, usually somewhere in the 80 to 100. And uh, what we thought is what we're most familiar with are uh, grades, letter grades. You know, most of us went to school for you know, 12, 15, 18 years. And so we know what an A means, we know what a B means. And so as I taste this, as I smell this and think about the value, Yeah, I, I think a solid B, uh, B plus maybe, uh, moving that mid 80s. Uh, it's, it's not magic, it's not amazing, it's not gonna change your life, but uh, it's better than average. It's, it's a good wine, it's a strong wine. So um, yeah, let, let's, let's go you know, high B to B plus. And I would love to know how you rate it. If, uh, if you're trying it with me tonight or if you drink it thereafter, you know, share with us what were your thoughts, what were the flavors you got, how did you enjoy it? Uh, at the beginning, I said we'd also try white next week. I think, uh, I think my brother said uh, Sauvignon Blanc is uh, the first white where he really got some uh, interesting taste, smells, something that made him think beyond just a bland white. And so I look forward to seeing uh, that, as well as uh, seeing what he thought about this wine. Uh, you know, we're similar in a lot of ways, but I don't know about our taste. So uh, at the end of this video, we're going to roll right into his tastings. I uh, look forward to seeing you again um, for Fancy Schmancy Wino. Cheers. Hi there, everyone. Jimmy here with Fancy Fancy Wino. Jimmy, not James. James is off doing something totally uninteresting. Probably alphabetizing his stamp collection or doing the long division. Something wholly uninteresting. We're here today to drink some wine. Yes. Specifically, this bottle of Gnarly Head Authentic Black 2013 from Lodi, California. It is a Petite Syrah blend. No idea why they call it authentic black. It's a red wine and a green bottle, but nonetheless, that's what it is. Let's just get right to it. Well, first I should point out, yeah, it's been opened already. In my defense, that's because my desire to make a video was not quite as high as my desire to drink wine last night. So this is a day two review. That's okay. That kind of thing happens from time to time and it's all right. Anyway, let's have a glass. Okay, first thing I'm gonna say is I'm an idiot and I now know why they call it authentic black. And that's because ink and deoxygenated blood doesn't look so good on a label. That is black. Oh, you know what else? Uh, something else before I forget that I have to mention this black that's kind of cool. The cork. First, they get props for using synthetic cork. I'm not a snob. It doesn't need to come off of a tree. I dig it. And it's black. That's authentic. Anyway, the wine itself. Oh, it's got some legs. Yeah, pretty good ones. Not like Tina Turner style, but they're 
they're good. Pretty hefty. Nice nose though. Get a little blackberry. Lots of baked, something baked though. Some vanilla, some chocolate. Yeah, that's really good, that's delightful. Good nose on it. You know what? The fruit's uh, either a dark black, like a blackberry or black cherry. Actually, you know what it is? It's Captain Black. Captain, yeah, Captain Black. Captain Black, black cherry or cherry, something like that, pipe tobacco. Very similar. Not like cigarette style tobacco smell. I mean, it's a really nice, rich, aromatic. Very fruity. I mean, you kind of you expect that in a ten, twelve dollar bottle of wine a lot of the time, and it it meets that expectation. But it's not super simple. It's got some complexity in there. I get some. Uh, yeah, a lot of chocolate comes through there. Some vanilla, of course, the oak. It's it's an oak wine, so lots of the oak. Kind of nice linger on it. Really like the the uh, lingering chocolate too. That's kind of nice. Moderate tannin. A little more acidic than I would have expected, but mm, yeah, moderate tannin doesn't have that like tongue hangover that sometimes you get. I mean, the, it's got a finish on there, and it's you know medium finish but doesn't hang out forever I like that you definitely get a little bit not as much uh, spice or pepper as you would get with some other Syrahs a lot of the Australian Syrahs and whatnot but definitely it's definitely in there definitely has some pepper finish anyway that's it that's what I taste there's a uh, probably reviews you can find online that are gonna have much more specifics but I for the one couldn't tell you I, I couldn't recognize a current, let alone tell you what a current smells like. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. I'm just gonna tell you what I what I experience, and what I experience in this is a nice, fruit forward, full bodied, not too simple. Yeah, I give it a B plus. It's good stuff, which is good because I still have another quarter bottle left. Cheers. See you next time. Next time we'll be drinking, try drinking a. Uh, I think a Sauve Blanc, New Zealand Sauve Blanc, which I may even keep sealed until the time. We'll, we'll see. We don't know. Cheers.